to rain so much. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> Everybody needs to subscribe because Mark here, he asks really good questions. Are you sure you're not interested? I was like, ah, don't ask me again. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> so that's when I say, okay, you need to really learn how to do it right. Nowhere, actually. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> scattered. Oh, did you really bring that up? That was a private conversation. <laughs> One second. <laughs> yes, we need to. <laughs> How's it going, baby? How you living? How you living? She still hasn't got any elephants, so it's a win-win so far. <laughs> I want to be in their presence, so I conduct my life in a way that I hope that they want to be in my presence as well. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I'm Mark Sugiyama from Eclectic Arts, based here in Seattle, Washington. And thank you so much for joining me on this 8th of November, 2021. And this is my uh, inaugural live stream from my new locale. Uh, for some that have been following my channel and, and the live streams that I've been doing, I recently moved actually as of a week ago. So I'm really excited that uh, my guest tonight gets to be the first live stream that I do from this location. And um, if you're new to my channel, if you would uh, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button, that will also allow you to um, access the chat. So if you would like to ask a question or a comment of my guest tonight, that's the way to do it. And if you're on the Twitch side of things, if you follow me over there, that should pretty much give you instant access as well to the chat. Um, I will try to fold in your questions and comments as I go with the conversation. I always try to be mindful of uh, when my guest is speaking on any of the live streams that I do, that I tend to let them finish their thoughts. And then I will try to put your comments in. So um, if you see the Kakam, he hasn't asked my question yet, most likely I will get to it. Just kind of be patient with me and uh, we'll kind of go along as we can. And I do see that we have people in the chat, which is great. So again, uh, good evening to all of you. If it's uh, if it's evening where you're at um, and just a real quick few housekeeping things um, that I do have more live streams scheduled and they're both uh, two of them that are coming up are gonna be this weekend on Saturday and Sunday at noon Pacific, uh, what are we in standard time now? And so if you'd like to know more details about what I have coming up, you can follow me at Eclectic Arts Media, one word on Instagram. That's where I post everything first. And then some of that information migrates over to other social media platforms. And uh, spoiler alert, if you have not watched the season four premiere episodes of Yellowstone, which premiered last night on Paramount Network, so episodes one and two, we will be discussing those episodes. So if you haven't watched them, you might want to save or, again, subscribe to my channel and come back to this live stream because it will stay on my, on my uh, YouTube channel uh, indefinitely. And then you can watch um, the conversation. Hopefully you've already seen those episodes like I have. And as I told my guests, I watched them multiple times <laughs> last night. Um, cause I'm not uh, that much of a nerd for Yellowstone as many of you are. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one that not only watches them when they're streaming, but you have this sets and you have season two and season three. And I was fortunate enough to actually be, um, gifted these items. So I know like there's the hat. I know they have a store now on this one, but this was signed by one of the cast members and all these other kind of fun things. So my favorite show on television. So this is always a treat for me when I get a chance to talk um, with any cast member. And uh, this cast member has graciously decided to return and discuss everything tonight. So let's get to, I don't even wanna hear from me, let's hear from my guest. Uh, my guest tonight first joined me back in April of this year. I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation then, and I'm extremely grateful that he has agreed to return tonight. Season four of Cable's number one drama, Yellowstone, kicked off its new season last night on the Paramount Network. Please welcome back to the Eclectic Arts Virtual Studio, Mr. Mo Brings Plenty. How you doing, Mark? Hi, Mo. How's it going? I am doing really good. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. It's it's going well. That's great. I'm glad that you're, yeah, you're doing wonderful. And again, thanks. Thank you so much for taking the time. I can't believe that's been, you know, it was April <laughs> when we did the last one. <laughs> yes. Time flies. It, it really does, sir. And I remember when we were talking about the eventual season four back then, I was like, gosh, that seems like such a long time away. And then here we are. <laughs> yeah. Just the start of everything. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just for everybody that's in the chat, um, just obviously most people probably realize that most not and any of the cast members are not allowed to talk about anything beyond the, the episodes that have been shown. So don't ask questions about what happens next Sunday or does this happen with 
you know, the hit on the Duttons and all. He, he's not going to divulge that kind of thing. And actually, we don't want to know that. We want to find out as the season progresses. So just kind of have to say that just so that we don't have somebody that's constantly putting things in the in the chat. And then I have to block them, you know. And all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Uh, but first and foremost, sir, how are, so how are things since I last talked with you? How are you doing personally, professionally? How are things going before we dive into uh, season four? Personally, um, I'm doing great. Uh, professionally, I'm doing great. You know, I'm blessed in every, in every way, in every aspect possible. Um, everyone, family, all my family members, all my loved ones are all healthy. Um, we're doing really wonderful. And and we're seeing our our way through this um, these crazy times with laughter and 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 good stuff, good things happening. How about yourself? Um, you know, I'm doing very well. I'm glad to hear that your your family and your loved ones and everyone that you care about is doing well during this time. And um, you know, knock on wood, I can say the same thing with my my family and uh, the ones that I care about. So it's been. Um, just uh, like a, just another wave or another chapter in this very strange, you know, period of time. Yes. Yep. And I, I, hopefully we get, get find our way out of it sometime soon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, we're we're definitely seeing glimpses of things, and you know, uh, well, not more than glimpse, more than glimpses now in terms of being able to go to things, and um, and uh, yeah, I do see a lot of folks are saying hi, Mo, to you in the chat. <laughs> Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, so he's definitely um, hearing and seeing you guys. And um, I see from your, your manager that yeah, I will be asking about that for sure. I already actually have that in my notes. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that things are going well and that uh, you've been busy and that, um, yeah, you have you know positive things to, you know, going on for you, even despite the, you know, the odd circumstances that we're all going through right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Let's dive into it, everybody. And again, if you're just joining us right now, um, if you haven't seen season four's episodes last night and you have them DVR'd or you're going to try to watch them later, you might want to come back to this live stream because we're going to start going through some spoilers of the first two episodes um, and kind of going from there. So I'm curious, Mo, for you, um, do, so do you get to watch, like, did you, did you watch the episodes last night? Was that the first time you seeing everything edited together? So this is what, you know, the finished product looked like? Or did you already know what this was going to look like, you know, months ago? No, I, I had no idea um, what it was going to look like. Um, you know, it was, it was quite, I did, we did get to see the very first episode, the very rough, rough cut, uh, just the, just tiny bits of it. I didn't get to see the whole thing. I just got to see bits and pieces here and there, um, but to see it all come together and how how they put it all together was just mind blowing. Um, even as an as an actor in the show, it still sees it never ceases to amaze me of how every individual had taken amazing words that Taylor Sheridan had written and breathe life into them, you know? And, and so it was just, it was mind blowing. I was totally glued to the television. <laughs> well, that, that's awesome to hear that um, as a cast member, even for yourself, seeing, you know, the, the presentation of the episode last night was like, wow, look, look at what was on the script and look at how they put all this stuff together in, you know, one final product. And, like you said, it was, it's mind blowing. And I think for every fan out there that's seen those episodes, especially the first one, the first like 10 minutes, it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty, I mean, I was, I was pretty pumped with, to watch Casey do his thing, you know. Um, I was like, heck yeah, that, that fired me up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and I think it, it really built, um, at least for me personally, that we know there's obviously a lot of revenge coming based on what happened at the end of season three. And so this is just kind of the start of it, the unraveling of it, the figuring out of who put the hit out on the Duttons. Um, and let's let's talk about you know your character scene in episode one uh, when you have the guy who's bragging about knowing the, you know, having that intel, and then you and some of the other folks from the casino and the tribe go down there to... Uh, kind of uh question him shall we say 
Uh, what, what can you what can you tell me about when you were actually shooting that scene? Um. Well, well, pardon me. What was your question again, Mark? Uh, so I'm wondering, like, so when you were actually shooting the scene when you're in the casino that your character does in episode one, when um, the guy that has the intel about, he says he has the intel about who put the hit out on the Duttons. Um, what can you bring us back? So, like, what do you remember from actually shooting that scene, or how many times you did it, or any of the other kind of things that kind of you know come back to you? I actually, I was, I was uh, so focused on making sure that the whole throat chop was going to go off smoothly, you know, and and me just the combination of everything because there's a lot of moving parts to that. Just that, just the, in that short little space, in that tight little space, we had a lot of moving parts, and to try to make sure that it we we got through it safely, you know. Um, ben, who played Checkers, super nice guy, and so we had some we had some good laughs before we we start filming that scene, and and um, I you know I got to know him as an individual, but. To have to step away from the 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 reality aspect of our relationship and step back into our roles and make sure that again to that we got through everything smoothly was was um, the number one priority, you know, because he here's an individual who had to trust my ability to get close to his neck without actually, you know, punching him in the throat and grabbing him by the back of his collar and slamming his head off the table before I hand him off. And so it was kind of, it was just one of those things and one of those moments that we just kind of had to allow some natural aspects to come into to that space and join us, but also, you know, along with the safety aspect of it too. And so it was, it was a lot of fun. We had, I really, it was a lot of fun. And and um, we enjoyed ourselves. <laughs> okay, and and do you remember? Was it like a handful of takes doing that scene, or did you guys kind of get just two takes and you're done? No, I, I think we did. We just did a few takes on it, and um, it, it, and and the, the most majority of the reason why is because and I was too I, I was too. There has to be. There's a timing aspect. In, in any movement when you're filming, you know, if you go naturally fast, then it's too fast. And so we had to find that right speed to, 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 to have the selling point of the throat chop. And so it took, us, it took me a few takes to get, to get that. Okay. And see, and then I, I love hearing those kind of things that for people like myself that uh, are, are not into TV or films or anything that we don't understand some of the things that what we see the preparation to make that look the way it's supposed to look in the final product could be yeah, it could be the slowing down of it it could be the timing of it and we're thinking oh they just go in there and they do it and then they're done it's like well no there's these other aspects to it that we don't think about and at least I don't think about it right and also the chips I mean you know that to try to keep uh, 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 not allow the chips to scatter completely all over the table because the first take we did, they did go all over the table and it took a, a lot, you know, too long of a period. There was, it'd, be, it'd almost be start becoming empty space, you know, as I was gathering these chips. And so we had to try to position them also in a spot to where they wouldn't scatter so far. And it gave me the ability to just be right there and not allow the space to get empty. Okay. Yes. Well, see, and there's there's yet another thing I wouldn't think about. It's like, well, oh yeah, if you, if you go too gung ho and then everything goes everywhere, and then yeah, your character's next thing is to put those things into the hat or what have you, and then bring them back yeah. uh, with the chip they had. So yeah, it becomes a, it's like a dance of getting yeah. the timing and all these other aspects to work together at the same time. Yeah, that's what I. That's why when I say all these moving parts in this tight little space, that's what I mean. I mean every little thing that has any type of movement, whether it's a human or, or a, an object, you know, those are all moving parts and we have to try to keep these moving parts in a certain area. And it's again, timing's everything. And so, yeah. 
Well, I have to say, purely as a fan, when I saw that scene, I loved it. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I loved seeing your your character um, exert exert your uh, your authority. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. It, a lot of my friends, they all text me later, you know, last night and some this morning. It's like, well, oh, now I'm starting to question our friendship. <laughs> I'm jaw joking, of course, you know, but right, right. You know. <laughs> Have to keep make sure that they call you sir at all times. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, and um, well, thank you for sharing that aspect. And then again, as fans know, and if, again, if you're just joining us, we're talking with Mo about uh, season four's episode one and two that premiered last night of Yellowstone. So if you haven't seen them and you want to see them fresh, um, there's a bunch of spoilers coming. Um, the uh, the next scene with your character um, trying to well not not the next scene but the one that we're talking about with um, the gentleman who was bragging about knowing the intel about the Duttons hit, um, I believe it was Chief Rainwater that tells your character to go old school um, in terms of how you treat him. So what can you tell us about that whole aspect of shooting that particular scene? You know, I think that's one of my favorite moments is when Rainwater and Mo was in the monitor in the room with the monitors there and rainwater tells mo to you know that he wasn't going to step away from the culture the traditions and to do to get answers you know utilizing the ways our ancestors did and so for me that was a very very strong moment for rainwater and mo in um it was one of, one of my favorite scenes so far. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now, did you have any input into that scene of how it was going to, um, you know, honor the, the the ancestors and the tradition? No, you know, Taylor's Taylor's like like I said back in April. Um, Taylor's pretty connected. You know, he's he's participated and been part of a, a, quite a few of our ceremonies. And so he has a deep understanding of, of who we are. And, and especially in this day and age that, that tradition still plays a role in our everyday life. And, and I think he does a spectacular job by emulating that and, and showing the, the audience that, that, you know, that it still exists through my character, you know, um, and, and is very much a part of my character's everyday life. And so it was, it was for me when, when Rainwater, you know, shared that with Mo, it was like, okay, I get to be me, you know, in that moment and Mo got to be Mo. And, and so I, I'm really thankful that, that Taylor has that connection to, and, and he implements it or he puts it into, you know, all of his scripts, I mean, whatever he's writing, he doesn't, he doesn't um, forget about it. You know, um, he keeps it alive and well. And so we're very blessed in that aspect to have such a great talented individual, you know, always have a consciousness about our existence as well. Yeah, that, that speaks volumes about him and um, his, his level of respect. Um, like you said, that he's, consciously thinking about that as he's writing scripts about let's put this in here and this is something that would make sense um instead of just trying to i don't know gloss over it or do something that really ignored the past um or how things traditionally would have been done he's he's already thinking no that's it's almost like it's ingrained in him at this point it, you know and, and it helps and it also it brings a different element you know uh, there's many television series that that's made attempts but they've kind of, you know, incorporated the, their own interpretation. And, and I th think that's what separates Taylor from so many. You know, um, first of all, Kevin Costner, we, we had him. He brought a, a different perspective and he brought a different view to, to the American Indian people uh, through Dances with Wolves. And, and now we have Taylor Sheridan, who's, who's also you know, taking that, those steps even further. And, and so we're very, for me, um, man, I just, I, I look forward to everything that, that Taylor writes and, and whatever he's doing because then he, 
he's a man of of of, of for me taylor is honestly a man sorry i was just looking at something taylor is a man that will stand by his truths and and by the truth not just his truth but by the truth and the realities of that truth and and that's what makes me just admire him even more you know and also the support the the cast that support that as well from kevin costner to to kelly to to cole um you know to luke all of them you know everyone supports that and and so it it makes it it brings another whole element another element to to the to the table as well you just don't have someone writing great stuff and and sharing truths but you have cast members who are also going to support that. so that's the game changer for me you know and, and taylor wants everything to be legit he wants it to be real there's no ands if or excuses about it you know if, if something doesn't look right it's not real we need it to look real and 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 so i really and admire him I, I can't say it enough i admire that i admire him and i admire the entire cast for their all of their support in it too yeah that's 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 wonderful to hear and uh, and um based on what you just said it sounds like something that um it's always nice when somebody and obviously i've never worked in hollywood but when somebody in that world um has been staying true to his convictions about something and then now they're starting to come to him obviously because they've created other shows that he wants to do instead of like trying to make him fit their system he's trying to like no you come fit my system yep you know yeah and, and he's got a great he's got a great crew i mean you know there's michael friedman uh he's got great partners as well i mean that that are all in support of it you know and and they see it they see the big picture and and they understand it and that's what you know that's why they're so ambitious and and so you know supportive of everything which in return for us as as american indian people that and not just us as american indian people you have the 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 ranching um traditions you have cowboy traditions um every aspect of of all the things that that society today has almost forgotten about you know and and these these traditions are very important to the world not just in this country but to the world uh they're very important to the environment they're very important to 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 feeding us to clothing us to helping us to understand how to live with the land you know and and how to how to how to not be a caretaker because the land will always care for itself but how to to coexist with it you know and and so all of these traditions are very important and and taylor's you know he's he's doing all that he can to the best of his abilities and and what's given to him to work with and and i think that and i'm not saying that any of the instruments or are are individuals that are there with him or or tools they are actually amazing folks you know and and so i have a lot of respect and admiration for not just the 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 crew or the the cast and taylor but also the crew the crew is is absolutely wonderful too i mean we're like one big family at the end of the day it's basically what it boils down to and everyone's absolutely amazing you know i have a lot of respect for every single one of them well and i think any, anyone you know with us right now in the chat or anyone watching this down the road that um it makes such a difference when you go to whatever your job is and there's people that you respect people that you get along with people that you admire versus the alternative mm -hmm. um then it becomes like a whole other thing and so the the fact that the yellowstone cast crew creators the um everyone involved um are working toward a common goal and have a common respect for each other based on what you're saying is tremendous and says a lot of it i think that's also probably why the show is so good yeah i totally agree you know um 
I think also too the the dragging of checkers was was pretty that was a lot of fun as well <laughs> you know and so we have we have a list of uh, very talented uh, directors as well and, and man Stephen K Christine they're all Christina they're all amazing every single one of them that's why I said the crew is absolutely wonderful as well and we I, it, it makes with such a great crew it also makes our jobs not only fun but it, it it makes our jobs a lot easier, you know, and, and cause they, by, by the relationships that we have with our crew, it gives us a much broader space to be able to be more of the individual that we're portraying. Yeah. See, and that, that kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier about um, that aspect of trust that, you know, the other actor has to trust you when you're doing the scene in the casino about that you're not actually going to throat chop him. You're not going to slam his head into the table. You're, and it reminds me of like really of any um, situation where you have to put a level of trust. Even like when I've done some of these live streams and I bring two guests together, sometimes three who have never met each other, they're trusting me that I'm kind of picking the right personalities, the right people, because they could get thrust into something where like, it's polar opposites, you know, politically or what have you. And they're like, Mark, why did you do this to me? There's a level of trust that they're putting in me. Um, and I always, I always kind of tell them that. So I understand if you want to know ahead of time who this person is, or you want to look them up and do your homework, because I would probably ask the same thing. If they said, Mark, they're going to, I want to put you together with two other interviewers. I'd be like, well, who are they? <laughs> Maybe they're totally not my style. Um, so I, 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 I totally get that. And, I, I do see there's lots of people saying, you know, Mo, love you on the show. I, I do see that there was a question that came in earlier that I want to get back to, which is kind of, I mean, when you shot your scene, obviously that was, a, you know, a while ago, but there's been more recent things in terms of accidents on set, unfortunately, as we heard, um, you know, with, with Alec Baldwin's situation. So the question came in from Sylvia about any concerns with weapons after that accident on the set of, you know, perhaps having some rust, you know, being a little bit rusty about doing those kinds of scenes. Well, you know, anytime you handle a firearm, just from my experience, I mean, I, I have firearms and um, I grew up with them and, and uh, my father always taught us about gun safety. And so we had guns hanging on the gun racks in the, in the living room. And so we were kids with guns right there, but we understood what they were and, and what they could do. And so we had a great deal of respect for him. And so I know I can only speak from the perspective of, of the set of Yellowstone. You know, we, safety is, is a very big thing. Um, we, have, we have a great stunt coordinator, Jason Rodriguez. I mean, there's a lot of, of Ian, who um, is a prop, who's a prop master. He's very big, everyone's big on safety. And so even during rehearsals, there is nothing, no, fig, no fingers on a trigger, you know, um, and, and if it's feasible and if it, if it can be accomplished and done, we have rubber guns, you know. Um, and so we, it, we never, never point a gun at anyone. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, it's just the, but that's that's where a lot of us who grew up out in the country we kind of have that understanding and I'm not saying that we're better than than people who live in a city I think that just it's just everyday life for us you know and and um, I grew up on a reservation where we we hunted for our food um, but there was a lot of procedures that went into we just didn't go out to kill something we had to ask. And, and we went on a lot of hunting trips where we came home with nothing. And um, my, my grandparents and my, my folks, we, I grew up eating deer, you know, um, everything, but everything was done out of respect. And, and we carried guns with respect. And so I think it's just, it's unfortunate what occurred and, and I, I, felt, I feel for the family. Um, I feel for the child who lost his mother, um, but everything is safety. It, it, I know if we on Yellowstone, we've all everything. 
if horses are involved, there was always a safety meeting. If, if there was going to be explosions, fire, any little thing that can harm anyone, there was a safety meeting all the time. And so safety is always a big, big thing. And, and it helps out when you have a lot of experienced individuals around to, to help support each other in that aspect. Yeah, well, that's like someone else is saying in the chat, it's great to hear about the safety on, on the set of Yellowstone. And I, I think I can also add, like what you were saying, that if you grew up and were taught properly at a young age how to respect firearms, how to respect if you're hunting and any of these kind of things, it becomes just kind of part of who you are. So you just kind of almost like second nature know what to do and what not to do versus you could throw someone like me who grew up in the city into a situation and, and I would need all kinds of guidance because I wouldn't know and I might do something kind of you know, foolish or ridiculous or hopefully not harmful. But um, like you said, it's nice having people on the set that also I'm thinking like I, I interviewed Jay Cream, who is you know, a cowboy in Utah that knows what he should and shouldn't be doing. That's just part of it. He doesn't even think about it. He just knows. Um, and you have obviously many other people on the cast and crew that are of the same background. So they just kind of know that you can come together and like, yeah, we are all of the like, like mindset. And if there's a few people that aren't, we're going to teach you. And like you said, we're going to have safety meetings to make sure everyone's on the same page before we, we shoot this. Because at the end of the day, we are doing a TV show that's for entertainment. <laughs> we want to make sure everything's safe and no one has any kind of issue um, for something that should be strictly entertainment at the end of the day. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I mean, even, even when it comes to driving, I know how to drive. You know, all of us know how to drive. But there are some elements that could be a little bit hazardous. And, and when, it can, when it comes to those moments, that's what we have stunt people for, you know, and, and they're good. They're, like I said, on Yellowstone, we have an amazing stunt crew. And so it's just, it, it's really, it, it takes everyone. It takes a village. It takes a village to, to make a, a great production. Um, it takes a village to keep everyone in that production safe. And so we just can't rely on one individual. It's, it takes all of us. Very well said. And again, I think people that are in the chat and other people that are watching this down the road that they're going to be able to re relate to that concept because everyone's been in some situation like that. It could be, again, your team at work, you know, the neighbors that you live nearby, uh, even your family. It's like there might be one person that maybe has kind of the, you know, a lot of the knowledge, but it can't just be them. Uh, when it comes, especially when it comes to a safety matter, um, everyone has got to be put chipping in and, and doing their part when it comes to that. Otherwise, yeah, something could slip through the cracks and then, yeah, tragedy ensues. So, uh, you know, once is too many times. I've always kind of said that to a lot of my students I used to work with. You don't want to say, well, it only happened to me one time when I got beat up or I got jumped or something like that. No, you, don't, you want to get to a point where you don't have any of that happening. That's the goal. <laughs> yep. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. You know, if you feel like you're in a, sketchy situation probably probably best to to step away from it <laughs> yeah for sure um and I, i've been in my my fair share of sketchy situations where and luckily for me my intuition kind of goes off and i'm kind of like yeah i need to be somewhere else even if it's just like someone's just seen they got a bad vibe to them it's like i don't need to be around you <laughs> uh, yeah. whatever you're up to i don't want to be around you when it when it goes <laughs> off or when it happens <laughs> Oh man, um, yeah. and I see, I see Native girls saying that you're very blessed to have grown up traditionally. Mo, um, you know, gun safety one on one, never put the finger, put your finger on the trigger. Um, so a lot of people agreeing with you know what what you're talking about and, and saying. And I, I and you kind of know from when we talk in April, I kind of have a random mind, especially being the the uber geek of Yellowstone that I am. Um, but so when you watch the episode, uh, let's say episode one or, or or both of them, episode one and two. Did you, is there anything in those episodes that you saw that you're kind of like, I know it was great. And it, like you said, you know, it blew your mind when you watched it and you're just like, oh my gosh, seeing all these pieces come together. But was there anything there that you thought was maybe like an interesting choice that they decided to go this direction with how the final edit came together or something that you wish maybe just as a fan that you wish you could have seen a little bit more of? Because everyone's kind of got their opinion of this right now, the day after. <laughs> You know, it was, it was, uh, there was a lot of stuff going down. I mean, there was a lot of action. There was a lot of things happening. And so I honestly didn't, I, I, I need to watch it probably two more times, catch up with you, Mark. <laughs> so, 
I'm, I take that back. I need to watch it one more time because I did end up because it, it, they started episode one again after they finished episode two. And so I started watching it again. Um, but there was so much going on. And I think you could I think a person could probably watch it 10 times. And and on the 11th time, they're still going to they're going to see something different. And, and it's going to support even more, uh, bring a deeper understanding of why, you know. So I really don't question or I don't find anything kind of out of the ordinary or interesting of why they took a direction in it um, because they're so connected and how they edit that thing together that it's for, it's, it's constantly, there's so many layers to it, you know, and, and, and every time you watch it, you're going to find another layer to it and it's going to help you to understand even some backstories from previous seasons. And, and it's going to be like, oh, okay, that makes sense now. And, and then it really brings you into a deeper perspective of the journey of Yellowstone. <laughs> that is a very good way to put it um, because I think that's why, like I've told you before, that I've literally watched the first three seasons probably 20 times each because I'm always finding something else within those episodes. It's never a one and done ever with anything related to Yellowstone or I'd even hazard to say anything that Taylor Sheridan does. Right. Um, I think there's so many, like you said, there's so many layers. You watch it the 10th time and then the 11th time. Oh, I didn't know there's, how did I miss that part? And that connects to, you know, the bikers or that connected something in season two. And I think that's part of the, the thing with, trying to be um, for folks that are maybe being too quick to judge after seeing things last night. It's like, you got to give it some time. Like there's some, there's definitely a method to his madness of like, he's, he's planting things early on and then they're going to start coming through in the other episodes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the journey. That's the magic carpet ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I, and I love being on that carpet ride. <laughs> so I'm just like, I like, just going to take it as it comes and just keep watching and rewatching. And then once it's all done, when we're at the, the season finale of season four, I'll probably do it all over again in one big, you know, binge, just to stick it all yeah. in again. I know I'm going to, I did, I did the last few seasons. I've done the same thing. It's like, all right, I'm going to binge it now. And, and it's like, okay. And so, yeah, you begin to peel back those other layers and it just, it's like, wow. And it just gets sweeter and sweeter every time. Absolutely. I totally agree. It was um, in my my day job. I was telling people that I was watching season four of Yellowstone. Some, some of them, they've heard the show, heard of the show, but they didn't they haven't seen any episodes. And so there's some Mark, what's it about? And trying to describe the show, I mean, in a nutshell, it's easy. But in terms of that, what actually goes on with it, it's like you just got to watch it. I mean, that's like what I ended up saying to everybody at work. I'm like, just take some time, either start with season one and work your way up to season four or start with season four and work your way back or whatever it is. But you know, whatever I say is not going to do it justice. Uh, yeah. So, no, I get the same me. question. I get the, can you describe it? And so my, my answer is, you know, that'd be like me trying to describe heaven to you. You just probably have to see it. <laughs> that, that is awesome. Yeah, that, that's, that's perfect. Um, <laughs> I'll have to remember that tomorrow. Somebody else asked me about, hey, how'd your live stream go with Mo from Yellowstone? <laughs> I still haven't seen that show, Mark, or someone over here is just talking about it or something. That, Yeah, it's, and that's, I think, you know, there's other TV shows that I watch and have, have loved over the years, but I can't really think of one that's to that level of, of like depth that I can't tell somebody, even if you gave me 10 minutes to sit there one on one and tell them, well, it's like this, and here's the main plot, and here's, you know, the, changes that have happened with the characters or in this case the family and their adversaries um and then they kind of get the gist of it it's like there's I'm, there's so much more to it that i can't even yeah. talk about all the you know the social aspects and the cultural aspects and um just even from a writing standpoint because me being a writer you know i'm going to be picking up on the dialogue and how sharp it is at times and i love that um it's just like again you just tell people what do you like? What kind of TV shows do you watch? And then that kind of tells me an, an idea or what films do you love? Don't you like the Godfather? Do you like Dancing with Wolves? Do you like these kind of things? And if you do, you need to watch this TV show. Then if you can't stand that stuff, then I might have to take more time to kind of explain to you why you still might need to watch this show. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I see people saying it definitely came in hot. If that didn't drop people in, I don't know what would uh, so many cool puzzle pieces. Yeah. All those things. Uh, Rock there seven saying that. So um, 
Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And then you and you told me back in April, it's you know, it's going to be so worth the wait uh, for season four when it came. And so I'm like, okay, you know. And I know again, I this show has not let me down. So I'm like, when season four is ready to be, and it made total sense when they decided to do in November, when you found out all oh, these other shows are going to be debuting as well. Let's get this universe kind of tight together, not have Yellowstone start in June and have this big gap and then have the other ones. You want to promote everything together. Yeah. Um, but uh, so and I'm kind of curious, too, with uh, somebody was uh, I don't know who was talking to me about this because they knew Kevin Costner was in the show. And they're saying, do you think anybody else could have played his role? And I'm like, I, don't, I actually don't know. That would kind of stump me. I honestly, I don't think so. I, I don't think that anyone else could have played his role. I don't think anyone else could have played any of the characters' roles that that are being played today. You know, um, even from the start of season one, you you needed that that right. You needed that right combination, and and they they got the right combination going. And so. Yeah, yeah it kind of goes back to it. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I don't think anyone could play could play John Dutton other than Kevin Costner. Yeah, and I, 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 when I was, you know, stuck when somebody asked me about that at work, I'm kind of like, and he's really shown his range during this these seasons as an actor. Um, not to say that he hasn't before and other things that he's done, obviously, but he's been a world-class actor for decades now, but he's really shown how his characters change, metamorphosized, um, you know, getting, especially into, into season three, he really started to shift and you can see where the guilt for him, like he's letting down his, his own father, grandparents, everyone who's settled, all that kind of thing. And it just it makes it so much more, uh, there's that word again, so layered. <laughs> there's so many yep. layers there. And that's just one character, let alone when he interacts with Beth and, and Casey and, and, you know, just everybody. Uh, even when you and Rainwater are having scenes together with him, it's like there's another dynamic that's happening. And it becomes like a little bit of like Three Musketeers kind of a feeling when things are kind of coming together for a common enemy like it did last season. Yeah. Um, it's just like, uh, and like you said earlier, that when you get the right people and the right cast who have the, the same mentality, it's like it'd be really hard to take one of those people out of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it would be, you know. So, it, but it's Yellowstone. It's Yellowstone. And so we all, we all you never know what's going to have to happen for the story to continue. Yeah, and I think some of the fans um, are probably trying to maybe brace themselves for that, that someone that maybe they really like as a character is, you know, going to maybe no longer be a part of the show for whatever reason, whatever Taylor decides to do in terms of writing that character off. Um, or they even kind of alluded to it a little bit with Jimmy yesterday, you know, of him going on on the road with Travis to make, a, make him into a man because John's kind of done with him at this point because he broke his word. Uh, so does that mean we're going to see him back or something else going to happen? And let alone anyone who they have not planted seeds about, and even like your character. I'm hoping that, like I mentioned to your pre-show, I'm hoping that we get to see more and more layers of, of Mo's background, like he talked about with his, you know, what happened to his mom. Um, and so does that make him even more similar to Rip's character of what happened to his parents? So there's, there's already those parallels. And right. it's kind of wondering if, it, if there's going to be even more of them. We never know. I mean... I, it's it's for me i'm just uh, enjoying the ride and trying to ride the wave as long as i can <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's kind of it just don't don't question a good thing <laughs> yeah no, that's it that's it can't oh, okay. and so, <clears throat> is there any anyone have any questions i know someone asked me uh today uh so what did Checkers whisper to you? Oh. He said nothing. I can't say nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was a wonderful episode, episode one and two. Yeah, for sure. And uh, let me see something real quick here. There we go. Yeah, it looked like things kind of froze for a little bit. Okay. Uh, 
What is that? Yeah, it seems like people, they're just making comments. Yeah, so anyone that's in the chat, if you have a question about the show or just something for Mo in general, please put it in there and I'll make sure to, to get in there. Um, uh, okay, but in the meantime, um, kind of switching gears for a little bit, I know that uh, you and uh, your manager and some other folks made a really historical trip to Italy. And I, I would love to hear more about uh, what was that trip about and what did you experience over there? So we've been been working with um, uh, Alex Alexandro Martir, who is a lawyer over in uh, Florence, Italy, and um, he's been coming to South Dakota since the early '90s, and he came to a Sundance. Well, he's been coming to Sundances, but he was at this particular Sundance and I met him and he was in South Dakota this, this particular year to um, ask Chief Leonard Crow Dog, who can, who should um, ask him if he could come over or if he could send someone over and to rebuild the relationship uh, between the Lakota Nation and the the Tuscany region government municipality in, in Florence. And so uh, Chief Leonard Crowdog told me that I'd be going over. And so I went and we started building, rebuilding, revitalizing our relationship from nation is nation to nation. And um, in our talks, you know, we've had many conversations, but one of the aspects was Columbus Day. And because I know Columbus is, was an Italian and he came from that area. And um, he was funded by the King and Queen of Spain. And so Alex began to work with the government there. And so this year, this last trip we went, we went, we made, it was to change the celebration of Columbus's birthday to a Remembrance Day of the American Indian people and the Indian people throughout the Americas. So now in Florence, they're no longer going to celebrate Columbus's birthday. Instead, they're going to have a Remembrance Day for us. And so we began to, it was a very memorable moment. Um, very touching, you know, I, I never thought I'd get to see that in my lifetime, but it wasn't about revenge for me. It was just about letting the world know, um, what we've, what we have been through and what we still go through today as American Indian people, because I, as I talked about back in April, you know, Racism is, it's not the issue. It's the lack of cultural understanding. You know, there's no cultural diversity and, and that's the issue. And um, humanity will never have space within the society if there is no cultural diversity. But the moment cultural diversity comes to life, within our own minds as individuals, regardless of what faith or religion or what skin color we have or what background we come from, if we are open to culture, other cultures, then it, it, what, what it does is it encourages ourselves to get more in touch with our very own cultural identity of our, the cultural identity of our ancestors. And, and, by, and, and the more we dive into that, then we become more humane to our emotions, which in turn helps us to be more humane to others and more compassionate to others. And so this year in signing the accord to change the day from the celebration of his birth, Columbus's birthday to Remembrance Day of the American Indian people was a huge step. I mean, we look, we took a giant leap, not just a step. We took a giant leap in the right direction. And um, 
And so it was, I don't want people to forget about him because then if we forget about him, then we're going to forget about the, the atrocities that occurred following his, his arrival, you know, to the innocent, you know, original inhabitants of this country. And, and so we have to, we can't forget that part of history. We have to look back. If we forget that part of history, then eventually we're going to make the same mistake. So as long as we don't forget it, then we will never allow ourselves to repeat it. And so that's one of the biggest things for me. So it was a very memorable trip. And, and I want to, I'm so thankful for my brother, Alex, who did a lot of hard work, you know, um, uh, to make that happen. And that, and so they asked me, um, what, what would be the next step? You know, and so I told them the next step would be to, to recognize us as American Indian people as human beings because we don't have human recognition within the United, within the system with the United States government. We're still declared animals. And so that's unfortunate fact that I just gave you, but it's the reality that, that we live with every single day of our lives. You know, I'm sitting here speaking to you in a language that we all learn, you know, and um, but there's other other means of, of communication. And it's just not about language. You know, the, the best form of communication is to have compassion for one another. That's why in our in our traditional languages, as 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 Indian people within this country, we don't have a word for love, you know, because love is 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 more meaningful when it is expressed versus when it's said. Wow, it, that is amazing that uh, on many levels of what you said, and this is one of the reasons why when I told people that I was going to have the pleasure to speak with you again tonight, that I learned so much from our talk in April, and now I'm, I'm learning, you're educating me right now again, um, the fact that um, you know the country of Italy is you know, recognizing and decided to make the change, like you said, that's not a step. That's a huge, you know, that's, that's huge that they're going to change, um, you know, the, instead of recognizing Columbus's birthday and viewing it as something completely, basically as a 180 from that. And let alone, um, as you were talking about uh, with cultural identity and diversity, I know just from a small standpoint that, it, I didn't really think about it, but it's so true what you said that when I started looking back to me being Japanese American and looking through what my grandparents went through with the internment camps and looking through uh, maybe my great grandparents and the language and the culture that I was lost on me for the most part being born and raised in America, that I start when I start understanding that, I start understanding things in a bigger picture. Um, and then I do find myself being much more. I would say tolerant, um, accepting, empathetic towards other people's cultures because I start thinking, well, if mine's like this and it means so much, and I'm just I'm just touching the very tops, you know, surface of it. What's going on for you, and what's going on for you over here? Um, and when you start taking the time to opening up yourself to those ideas, then for the most part, good things happen. And if you don't, then well, then we're on the path that we're, we've been on, basically. Wow. So, th so one, thank you for educating me about that. Again, I love hearing when you give them a chance. And I know that you speak to many, many people over the years, but uh, the fact that you're on my live stream talking to me and letting everybody else know as well, but just for me personally, it's like, this always makes me feel good. I love it when I learn something new and then I can take it with me and hopefully pass it on to other people, let alone myself. Um, so and I, I, I deeply appreciate that. Um, I'm honored to be on your live stream, Mark. I mean, it's it's when when my manager told me, I was like, oh, I'm excited. And so <laughs> I was like, oh, we got to get chores done so I can get back and get that, get the, get it back on, get back, get back to the house and get on the computer. And so, but, you know, it's it's really it's, it's what it boils down to today. I mean, we're all in this world together and and the higher power, the one artisan, I don't care what name we have for this great creator whether it's God, Allah, Jehovah, Wakantika, don't matter. You know, it's just the same creator, the same artisan. And, and it's truly apparent that this one creator 
is a lover of diversity. If you look at the world, you're going to see that we're, we're, we're constantly reminded, reminded of that reality every single day of our lives. If we just look around, you know, um, if, the, if the higher power wanted everything to be the same, then it would have been so from the very beginning. You know, it would have been one species of tree and all looked the same. Branches all located in the same place on the trunk, all facing the same direction, the same leaves, same size. Same with stones, you know, but the rocks and whether it's the rocks in the prairie or the rocks in the ocean, they're, they're all different sizes, all different colors. And, and so it's apparent. And that's the reality, the, 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 the reality that is, is expressed to us through nature. And, and we, we've excused that because we no longer take the time to to acknowledge nature itself and because we can't acknowledge that the, the diversity that exists within nature we can't acknowledge the diversity that exists within our own kind as human as human beings and and so we have to just we don't have to but we should we should just take a moment and look around and see what heaven is all about Heaven is all about diversity. And I'm saying heaven so people would understand, would know what I'm talking about, you know. Um, but it, there's diversity that exists there. So if we can't get along here, in this moment, in this space, as physical beings, then who are we to feel that we would be welcome there? And and so we have to show and show our gratitude for the 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 the, the greatness that exists and all things, the goodness that exists in all things, and, and acknowledge that diversity so that one day when we make that transition in life, we will be welcome there. You know, um, that's what love and compassion is all about. I mean, I, for a long time in my life growing up, I didn't know what love was. You know, I, I still don't quite know what love is. What love is, you know, I'm still learning. Um, my life would probably be different if I fully understood it, but I'm always going to be a student. I'm always going to be learning. You know, I'm not, I'm not some wise individual. I'm just a student, just like everyone else, but I'm going to share what, what, what understanding I have, I had gained of the knowledge that I have with others so that it can be shared, you know, because it's not mine, you know, it's all of ours. And so that's that's the gift, you know. And so it, it's so important. And so I, again, you know, I'm thankful to to all of the the individuals in Italy that that worked hard to make what occurred, uh, what happened, happen. Because we couldn't do it ourselves. It took their their dedication. It took their compassion and their love for for all people and unity to to. to to have the courage to take that step. And, and so I, I applaud them for that courage that they have. Yeah, I mean, again, very, very well said. And it I think it goes back to what, uh, for most people, when any time you've been faced with, you know, a difficult situation in your life, or if there's crossroads in your life of, um, you know, sometimes you need to take that path that you feel is the right path. It's the one that is going to perhaps as you mentioned, um, you know, get you uh, when you cross that bridge, so to speak, um, into another life that you've shown your your truth, your purity, um, you know, your intention. I, I like to use that word a lot about things. And um, that's never necessarily the, the easiest thing. We all know that. Um, but I like the fact that you're taking things that you've learned and have been shared with you and are sharing them with everyone else including myself so that like you said so then we can share them with other people and it's a chance to be selfless and a chance to understand one another and um you know when we do that that's when we can start taking those steps towards um you know things really getting turning that corner that we need to be turning um right. i've been down a path for me personally that's just um it, it gets harder and harder every day sometimes to be like you know what i still need to do what i believe is right um, everyone around me is doing things that I don't necessarily consider to be right, but I have to do with what's best for me and then make sure that I'm spreading that to other people. That's how they learn about it. Um, 
And uh, I, I can use these live streams as a perfect example. Anyone who's watched some of them from the last year and a half, I've had some guests on that I didn't quite agree with. Um, but that didn't mean that I said no to them or that I said, well, I'm going to turn this off and we're not going to, we're done. It's like, no, I need to kind of, I need to give them their platform, but also I, I, you know, come back with them after they've said their piece, what my piece is and also what and why I'm saying it and not to be a, someone that attacks people or, you know, if you're this person or you, or you support that person, then I'm done with you. It's like, well, wait a minute, let's have a conversation about this first and then kind of um, hopefully get to some sort of middle ground if there is a middle ground um and if your intention is pure and you're and then i think some people can at least respect that and then you can start moving forward um that's for me it's been um, a learning period for sure and it's something that i've grown a lot i mean during during a freaking pandemic that's what i've grown by talking to people through a, a phone or a computer or you know a little camera up here <laughs> um, but it's but but it's been so true um, so, and again, I, I, I thank you so much for taking this time to, um, to share your knowledge with me. And um, you, as you said earlier, that you don't feel that you're a wise manager sharing other people's information and things that you believe in. But um, it takes a wise man to do that, too, I would say, um, because you could have that information and choose not to share it. And then it defeats, it defeats its own purpose at that point. So I, I think you should give yourself a little bit more credit because I know a lot of people that won't, <laughs> they won't share what they know and they know a lot of things that could help out a lot of other people. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. You yeah. know, we, we, we just got to keep plugging away and um, you know, and, and, and it's crazy because, and I mean, we, like you said, there's, there's always going to be people excited about things and there's going to be people that are naysayers, you know, and, and it always, ha it always occurs. And, and for me, and I'm thankful for those naysayers because if it weren't for them, then I wouldn't know that, that I'm doing the right thing, you know, uh, because if I wasn't doing the right thing, there'd be no naysayers. Everyone would be quiet. No one won't even mention nothing, but because I feel like I, I know we're doing the right thing is it, because these naysayers are popping up and there's a few of them, you know, um, but it's, the thing is that if so, if you have an idea and, and if you're thinking something, then do it. Simple as that, because if you don't do it, someone else will. And when that's, when someone else does it, then don't be mad at them because they're doing it. Be supportive of them, you know, um, because they're, they're actually taking, they're, they're taking that step that you should have took, but you didn't take. Um, and so it's, it's one of those things that, that we all live with that. It don't matter where we live in the world or what our background is. We all deal with that every single day of our lives. And, um, but look at them and say, thank you for reassuring me that I'm doing the right thing. That's a really... There's another thing I'm going to tuck away into the back of my head uh, of um, when I, yeah, because I've been, and I've talked about this too, not to spend too much time on this, but uh, there's been people that have been starting to pop up into my own live streams and comments and things of that nature that have been naysayers. And I'm kind of like, I didn't even know some of them were there. I found them in some little folder on YouTube. I'm like, what's this folder that I didn't see before? I'm like, oh, some comments that got held that people didn't <laughs> like about something. And you know, yeah, initially I start laughing about it. And some of them we know were like constructive criticism. That's okay. I can understand that. But some of them are just being goofy to be goofy. And I'm like, okay, I, I must have struck a chord then. I'm starting to, I'm, I'm doing the right thing because now these naysayers are coming out saying, oh, you're, you know, you said this and you said that. And I don't agree with this. And it's like, okay, well, that's fine. You, you know, you can say your piece. But uh, yeah, I thought it was all kind of roses for a little while. And I said, oh, no, I guess there's some, you know, prickly thorns in there too. But that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's right. Every rose has its thorn. <laughs> that's right. Um, and some of them came out all right, but that's okay. Like you said, it just reminds me of that. I'm I'm doing what I know in my heart and in my, my soul is the right thing to do. And I'm trying to treat people the right way. I think one of the greatest compliments I had of somebody that's done a couple um, interviews with, and I've met him in person too, was that, Mark, you're a really nice guy. And some people would be offended by that. And I was like, that's a huge compliment to me because I try to be that person. Um, it's intentional with me. I'm trying to treat people the right way with respect. Uh, it doesn't matter who they are, what walk of life they come from, or what their entertainment background is. I treat everybody the same as much as I can. And um, 
So when he said that to me, he was kind of like wondering like if I was going <laughs> to take that the wrong way. It's like, no, that's a huge compliment to me. You know, I, I wish I didn't you know other people would say that. <laughs> so, well, you are, you are a super nice guy, Mark. If you weren't, I wouldn't be on the show right now. <laughs> but well, there we go. I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate it. I told people, yeah, you know, if somebody comes back, must be doing something right. Yep, because no one, are. no one will be spending time with anyone in any walk of life. If you've got your hair cut by someone you didn't like it the first time, you're not going back to that stylist or, you know, the interviewer or whoever it is you're working with. Restaurant had a bad meal. You're not going back there. That's um, right. But uh, yeah, to kind of bring this back to Yellowstone there. I'm sorry, there was a question earlier from, let me sure I get the name here, Michael, who asked about how authentic was the finding of the skulls and artifacts in the pipe trench? So like, in your opinion, how authentic was that? Uh, that particular scene when they're finding those artifacts it was it was pretty it was spot on you know it was spot on and so i loved it i loved it and so actually sarah ann uh, repainted that buffalo skull to help get it all ready for for that scene um, you know you didn't get to see the whole designs what was put on there but it was painted and so yeah it was spot on. Loved it. We it was it was wonderful. Okay, well there there you go, Michael. Now you know that it was um as Mo said, it was spot on. So uh, that's that's how and that probably goes back to what you're saying about Taylor. You know, being mindful of how he wants things to look. He doesn't want some kind of made up make believe thing. It's like no, well, what would this look like if we actually dug this up and there it is, these artifacts. Yeah. Um, it, it should look like this. Uh, which yeah. actually. Brings up a really interesting point um, with uh, um, the prequel of the Yellowstone that's going to be debuting, I believe, in December. Um, you're doing some consulting. Is that something you can talk about, or is it something you can't talk about? Um, something I can't general... talk about. Something I can't oh. talk about yet. And um, man, I'm excited for everyone to see that show too. <laughs> you know, it's it's good. It's it's good. It's all good. I wish I could okay. talk about it, but I can't. So, okay yeah. yeah no 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 problem at all i just knew that you were um yeah you were uh, involved with that show in that aspect so i just wanted to see if there's anything that you could talk about but that makes sense uh, <laughs> we'll we'll see it when it comes and then once the day is debut then maybe we can get back together we'll talk about that <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and, and you know that's another thing too about um about taylor and michael and all them is that they're the first production that has had an american indian department and um, Daryl Begay heads that up, and so it's it's that's what I mean by they're taking big steps for us as well, and, and I'm so thankful for that opportunity. You know that we're actually getting more and more Indian people involved, and we're getting more not just from my tribe, but people from different other tribal backgrounds. You know, and so it's 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 wonderful. Uh, different cultures and people are going to get to see all that that there was diversity existed in this country for a very very long time pre-1492 you know different languages different ways of of prayer different uh tradition or cultural um ways of doing things there there was such a diverse mindset you know but they all communicated through movement and through the spiritual understanding of life and so there was no barriers there was no walls even though we had different hairstyles or or we painted you know, use different colors different paint designs different symbols um we were different in many ways but yet we we understood and knew we were all the same and so even though we again spoke different languages we still communicated and so that's one of the things that I'm, I'm thankful that Taylor and them are, are showing, you know, they're exposing that. And, and so it's time, it's, it's well overdue. And so it's now finally occurring and happening of, of all the different aspects of, of the, the many cultures that exist in this country and still do today. Yeah, it's, it's like I remember you were talking about back in April about how you wanted to let um you know the, the the greater public know that when people think of native americans a lot of times they think of them in the past it's like we're we're here you know we're here right now 
and you know what are we doing right now? And like you're talking about with Taylor and um, and Michael having um, you know Native American department, um, you know the first ones to have that. That you know the, the the struggle is very real. It's still here. It hasn't gone away, and the people haven't gone away. Um, and uh, and that's always you know, a really good reminder to everybody, including myself, because um, sometimes you get caught up in what and only the things you see or hear or social media or what have you. And if you're not, you know, if you don't have your finger on the pulse, sometimes you forget that aspect from from a lot of different cultures. It's like, oh, well, that was something that happened in the past or something I read about, you know, in history books. It's like, well, no, <laughs> that's part of it. Like you said, you don't want to forget it, but it's also what's going on right now in 2021. That's right. You know, and, and like I said, Daryl Begay, he, he heads up that department and and I applaud him as well because he's really He's conscious and aware that okay, we need to to bring forth the cultural aspect, the the, the cultural teachers, the language speakers, you know, the, the the many people that that are the heart and soul of our of our tribes, and and the many people that that maintain uh, the the many traits of our ancestors that society has forgotten about because you know. We would applaud an individual that may look Indian, you know, or native, but may not know anything native. And and so I'm thankful that Daryl is bringing forth these individuals and opening up these doors for for that part. And, and I'm not saying that someone that doesn't know anything native but is native is any lesser than a person that is a tradition a traditionalist you know, our language keeper or speaker, um, they're not any less than, they're, they're both equal, but we also have to allow space for those that still represent our ancestors and, and who, who still maintain the knowledge and understanding of our ancestors. The, those are the people that also need space and need a platform as well. And, and through Daryl, through Taylor and all them, Michael, every single one of them, David Glasser, every single one of them, where, where we, they have, they created that platform and they're opening those doors up and giving that space to them. And so I'm thankful and, and bl I feel so blessed to, to get to watch this all, all unfold before my very eyes, you know, thinking again in my lifetime, would I ever experience and see the things that I'm witnessing today? If you had asked me that when I was told me I was gonna get to see this in my lifetime when I was a kid, I would have been very doubtful. But so I'm very blessed that, that I'm getting to see this all unfold today. That's that that's amazing, um, and it's uh, like you said, it's amazing that you get to see it during your lifetime, um, and you got a lot of life left to live. So I mean, this is the beginning of it, <laughs> and hopefully, other other um, creatives and other studios start taking note of what's going on and taking this as like, hey, look what they did. And look how you know look how it's working so well for them. Let's adopt that and do do something else, and maybe put an, an extra layer on it, an extra spin on it, and just so it, watch it kind of grow and spread, just like that whole ripple in the pond thing. Yeah. Um, we want it to be the beginning of something, not you know, not the one and done end of something, and no. uh, and, and and not to jump around too much. But there <laughs> there was a comment that was kind of funny that. Talk about off subject. I will also definitely never look at a cooler the same way again in terms of the show with the oh. rip and the, and the, the, <laughs> the snake. Rattlesnake. Yeah, that was pretty cool, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I I did not see that coming. Well, I, <laughs> he was going after work uh, with that, but um, yeah, rock we, that. We that never, was... we never. I had um, <laughs> uh, one time I was changing the tire in my truck. I was young and my friends were young and my buddies, they come pulling in and they threw this bag at me, this gunny sack. And within that gunny sack, there was a snake in there and it was a rattlesnake. And they said, Mo, here, catch. And so I was going to catch it. And then I saw it coming and I saw the form it was starting to take as it was flying towards me. And so I just kind of softly caught it so it didn't hit the ground too hard. And it, you know, and I was like, whoa, and I could hear the rattlesnake inside there. And so, yeah, lucky it wasn't the lunch, lunch box or cooler. <laughs> <laughs> but the games we used to play, it was always funny till someone got an eye poked out. <laughs> How we lived through it all. 
Yeah, you know, I I was talking with some people at work. Uh, actually, a guy today that's around the same age as me, you know, and he's in his fifties. And we we're talking. Well, yeah, I remember back when you we'd do these kind of things that were just so crazy, and you could kind of get away with it. And um, but then at the same time, just how how dangerous some of the things were that we used to do. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yep. I I totally remember doing some some things that uh, nowadays, even if you tried it. Uh, let alone just from opinions of you know other adults or something you know getting all over you about doing something but i don't know if you'd, you'd survive some, some of the stupid things that you yeah. Do. yeah no i totally agree i totally agree it's like there's a i think we're, we're built from a different uh a different model or something back then <laughs> yeah uh, and, and i often think about that where punishment back then was we'd have to stay inside that was punishment. Where now today, punishment is you're gonna go outside. Yep. And so, yeah, how times have changed. They they absolutely have, and you're and you're totally right because I remember with some of the young people that I used to work with, that uh, we would do uh, PE classes every afternoon. And I'm not the most athletic person. I would tell them that, but I also told them that you know if I can run two laps and I can beat you, there's something really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you should you should never ever be beaten by me, the old out of shape man, on you know doing two laps around the track. And I would beat half of them. That's when I was like, "What do you guys do?" And they play video games, you know, <laughs> hang out, chill, uh, you know, these kind of things. And you're, you're so right that you know, if you want to really upset a young person, make them go outside. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I spend, yeah. spend every day of my life outside, even in the winter time. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Well, I'm seeing so the, anyone in the chat as we're getting close to wrapping this up, that um, if you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll definitely um, you know put them out there so that Mo can I give you a direct answer. It's a rare opportunity when you get to talk to a cast member from from Yellowstone, let alone one who's as knowledgeable and as kind and sharing as Mo is. So if you have something, please put it in there in the next few minutes. Um, because I know it's two hours later for you um, over where you're at, and um, so I'm also kind of just and. Uh, you've mentioned, you know, with um, you're outside every day, doesn't matter if it's, you know, the winter or any other kind of time. Um, and obviously that's where you feel probably most at home. Do you ever feel uncomfortable when you're inside or what kind of situation makes you uncomfortable? What you would have to be like, in, is there anything in this lifetime that makes you uncomfortable? Yeah. Being inside for a long time. If I'm inside for a long period of time, then I begin to very, I get, I start getting restless and then I start getting very uncomfortable. And so, yeah, I need to be outside. That's my office. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, and, and people that can handle sitting in an office all day, I mean, man, that's, that takes strength. And they're obviously, obviously busy enough to, to be able to keep their mind distracted. But for me, I'm, I'm the opposite. I start feeling trapped. I start feeling claustrophobic. Um, I can't breathe. I, I mean, not that I'm not that dramatic, but it, it starts if it's if I'm inside. I remember when I was a kid growing up and in South Dakota on the reservation and the so when we get a blizzard, blizzards back then lasted for quite a while. And so we would be snowed in for like maybe a week, up to two weeks at times. And um, we would just go bonkers, my brothers and I, and we would be like, all right. So we start coming up with these stupid little challenges that required us running outside through the snow with no shoes on or whatever. I mean, and seeing how far we can do it before we had to turn around and run back into the into the house. And so we had, I mean, it was always, we always had to be outside and we loved being outside ever since we were kids, you know. Um, we would, especially at full moon night, a full, if there was a full moon, there was snow on the ground, it was like daylight for us because we didn't have electricity when I was a kid growing up, but my brothers and I, we had such an imagination to be able to create all kinds of cool little adventures and play some cool little games, you know, um, and have some pretty awesome. We were, 
doing their American Ninja challenges as as kids on a reservation, and little did we know that there was going to be a show about it one day on on today's television networks. And so, <laughs> and see who can climb up a tree and jump to the next tree. I mean, we're all doing all these crazy things as kids just to get out of the house, regardless of how cold it was and how much snow was on the ground. Back then, we didn't measure snow by the inches. We we measured snow by the feet. Wow. <laughs> and, and, and as you know, I mean, I, I grew up in the city here in, in the suburb of Seattle. And um, when I went to college to learn how to become a study education to become a teacher, the district where I was in, they get a lot of snow. Like you're talking, they measured in feet. They don't measure it in inches. And in Seattle, if they get an inch, you know, everything goes into alarms. It's all over the news and everything. <laughs> And I, I I still remember when I first went to meet my my uh, mentor master teacher in the a town called Yakima, um, and I said, "So do you guys? What do you do when it snows? I mean, do you guys close pretty regularly like they do in Seattle?" And she literally laughed at me. She started laughing, <laughs> and she's like, "Mark, you know, it has to be maybe twenty feet before we decide to even consider closing. I mean." Th th you're clearly not from here. <laughs> it's like, okay, all right. Well, yeah, you can have fun at my my expense. <laughs> yeah. um, but I but I do remember that because that winter it got the snow and everything. I just never left. It was there for months. <laughs> it was just... yeah. Like, yeah. oh my! I I remember looking out my window like. Is it still there? <laughs> it just doesn't go away. Ice everywhere. And it's like, yeah. oh my gosh. Um, so what when you're describing, you know, with you and your brothers going outside and regardless of the weather and just that you know you wanted to be outside and using your imagination. Um, I wasn't necessarily outside, but I do remember using my well, I was outside, but not in the snow, but I remember my imagination. I think that was something that a lot of um folks that are maybe in their fifties and older remember. You used your imagination because that's what that's all. What's all you had? Um, we, you know, for me, I remember coming home from school and you took off your school clothes and you put on your play clothes and mom kicked your butt outside and you yeah. were outside. Yeah, and you're kind of like, so what are we doing today? You know, you might find a rock in a puddle and figure out some kind of weird little thing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it was. I, to I totally can. I can. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see Michelle's, Michelle's talking about garbage bags as sleds and socks as gloves. <laughs> yeah. <I, I, laughs> <laughs> Good old days. Good yeah, old days. it really was. And it was like um, um, I, I was talking to, I forget, I, know, I forget who that musician was, but they were talking about how, um, you know, these days, and even back, you know, like in the early 80s when MTV came about, if you were listening to a song, then you had a video or a visual to go with it. But if you grew up like in, say, the 70s or later, you didn't have that. So if you're listening to your stereo and your album or your cassette or your A-track or whatever, the the music video was in your head. Yeah. And that was that's so true. And I just never thought about it until she put it that way, that you start thinking about the, the band or looking at the pictures and you start picturing like them in motion in your head or what a concert might be and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, oh, I see that Michelle saying I'm from Washington State, Mark. We call it Yakum Southern Colville. Oh, OK. Yeah, I'd love to hear about that, Michelle. Sometime offline, we'll, we'll, we'll connect and you can educate me. That would be great. But yeah, those those old days, I, at the time, you know, it's like you just didn't know any better. So that, that's what you did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and now every kid is, you know, trying to post and look a certain way on social media. And they got the latest video game and they've got headsets because they're playing, you know, some World of Warcraft against their friend and all this kind of stuff that I'm seeing. I know I'm getting old because I don't understand it. That's, that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's me too. That's me too. All this, all this crazy kind of stuff. But uh, well, everybody, uh, and Mo, I thank you so much for taking the time. And I'm thoroughly looking forward to the to the rest of season four of, of Yellowstone. But uh, more, I think even more importantly, I just really enjoy talking with you and the time that um, that you give to me while, when we do these live streams. And um, it's always such a pleasure for me. And like I mentioned earlier, I always learn something from talking with you that I plan on passing on to other people that I come in contact with. So um, I just, I'm just really, really grateful and appreciative of you 
taking this time. So um, I wish you and your family well and stay safe and much success to you. And um, yeah, hopefully somewhere, you know, maybe uh, I'll talk with your manager about that. I'll be connecting for a third time whenever it seems like the right time to do it. And, um, and we'll kind of uh, see, see where things are at. And um, I also have kind of this, this idea in my head since I have had Jake Ream on this live stream platform, maybe having both of you together or something, if we can work the schedules out. Yeah, that'd be great. I like old Jake. He's a good guy. He had nothing but complimentary things to say about you, sir. So I was just like, yeah, maybe somewhere down the road, we'll get the two. Maybe when the season's over or something, have the two of you come on and we can talk about the whole shebang. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. That'd be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, everybody in the chat, thank you for joining us and everyone saying how much they love you, Mo, and um, and thanking me. Oh, well, thank you <laughs> for following me. And uh, again, um, Mo, stay safe where you're at and thank you so much for everything that you do. And I uh, can't wait till we connect again. Thank you so much for giving me the space and time, Mark. Appreciate you and keep up the good work, my friend. Thank you. Have a good night over there and stay safe. All right. Take care. We'll see. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.